Hi, welcome to Storytime with Gigi. Today we're going to be reading another story from this Disney Princess Happily Ever After Stories collection, A Treasury of Tales. And our story today comes from Sleeping Beauty, and it's entitled The Fairies Plan a Wedding. The fairies, Flora, Fauna, and Merryweather, had loved Princess Aurora from the time she was a baby. Now the princess was engaged to marry her true love, Prince Philip. And the fairies couldn't have been happier. It's going to be a beautiful wedding, Fauna said as she watched the young couple stroll through the castle gardens. Of course it is. We're going to make sure of that, Flora said. What do you mean? asked Fauna. Well, Flora began, we can't trust just anyone with the preparations for the wedding. We must see to it ourselves. You're right, Meriwether agreed. We must go to the king and queen and ask them to put us in charge. King Stefan and the queen agreed right away. It would be an honor to have you take care of the wedding, the queen said graciously. That afternoon, the fairies made a list of everything that needed to be done. Invitations have to be made, addressed, and delivered, Flora began. We'll need to create a beautiful bouquet for the bride, Fauna continued, and a spectacular cake, Meriwether added. Don't forget the music and Princess Aurora's gown, Flora reminded them. The list got longer and longer. When it was finally done, the fairies looked outside and saw stars in the sky. It was nighttime. Oh, my, said Flora, we'd better get some sleep. We've got lots of work to do. The next day, the fairies rose early, ready to get to work. Let's begin with the flowers, Flora suggested. The other fairies agreed. Soon they were in the royal garden. Every flower imaginable grew there. Flora wanted the princess to carry roses. Meriwether thought that was a bad idea. The stems had such prickly thorns, but there were too many choices. There's plenty of time to decide, Meriwether said. Why don't we go see about the invitations instead? Together, the fairies went to a room in the castle that was filled with fancy paper. I like this, said Fauna, holding up a sheet of creamy yellow. Oh, no, this is much better, Flora replied, waving some pink paper that had a scalloped edge. Wedding invitation should always be white, disagreed Meriwether. I'm sure the princess thinks so, too. Dears, Fauna interrupted, let's not bicker. There's plenty of time to settle on the invitations. Why don't we go see about the wedding cake instead? Look at all that paper in every color. In the kitchen, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether argued about what kind of cake to make. Ladies, the baker said gently, why don't you come back when you decide? Next, the fairies went to meet Princess Aurora at the royal dressmakers. When they arrived, the princess greeted them warmly. Isn't this lovely, she asked, holding up some ivory-colored satin. It is pretty, dear, Flora agreed, but what about this silk? She circled Meriwether, covering her in fabric. Or how about velvet, Fauna asked, winding some cloth around Meriwether. Flora, Fauna, and the princess kept wrapping different fabrics around Meriwether. Soon the weight of the fabric was too much, and Meriwether fell over. If no one minds, she said, could we choose the fabric another day? Looks like they're putting everything off. The search for just the right music to play at the wedding didn't go any better. The royal musicians played song after song for the fairies, but Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether simply couldn't agree. The day before the wedding, the three fairies met to go over what still needed to be done. Let's see, Fauna said. The list says invitations, flowers, food, wedding cake, music, and wedding gown. But, but that's almost everything, Meriwether cried. I'll never forgive myself, Flora wailed. We've ruined the princess's wedding. Wait, Fauna said, her face suddenly brightening. There's still time to arrange a magnificent wedding. We'll just use magic. What a perfect plan, agreed Flora. We're going to have to give our wands double the power to get everything done, Fauna said. Be back here in an hour to make the wedding gown. And with that, the fairies took out their wands and hurried off. Meriwether went straight to the room with the fancy paper and waved her wand. 
Invitations, make yourselves, then fly down from all over your shelves, she commanded. Within seconds, hundreds of pieces of paper folded themselves and pins began to write out the details. Then the invitations flew out the window, landing on doorsteps throughout the kingdom. Meanwhile, Fauna went to the kitchen and asked the royal baker to bring out the cake pan, the cake he had made for the night's dessert. Fauna concentrated on the simple cake before her. When she waved her wand over it, she said, Make this cake grand so that it might, feel all, it might feed all the land. Immediately the cake began to grow. Soon it had gotten as big as the table it, it was on. Perfect! Fauna exclaimed as she scurried off to her next task. Outside, Flora flew over the garden. She smiled at, she smiled at her wand and said, Send your magic down below and make Aurora's bouquet grow. Then she chuckled. By the time I return, the princess will have the most beautiful bouquet of flowers. But first, I'd better meet Meriwether and Fauna. I don't want them to make the wedding dress without me. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether took a simple dress from Princess Aurora's closet. The fairies held their wands over the dress. Flora closed her eyes and began, Make a gown for a lovely bride. And Fauna finished, With a train that's long and wide. Then Meriwether added one last thing, and since you are three wands, not one, we expect a job well done. A swirl of fairy dust surrounded the dress for a moment, then disappeared. What stood before them was an exquisite gown, but its train was so long it stretched across the floor, out the window, and cleared to the other side of the kingdom. Yikes! Just then Princess Aurora appeared, carrying a bouquet of weeds. I found these in the garden, she said. Then she caught sight of the wedding gown. And what happened to that dress? Suddenly there was a loud crash. Moments later, the royal baker rushed in. The cake is still growing and it just broke through the roof. We're sorry, princess, Flora cried. We couldn't agree on anything, so we used magic to get everything done in time. But our wands... We made our wands work so quickly that the magic came out all wrong. The princess smiled. Let's postpone the wedding, she offered. The invitations have already been sent, said Fauna. Princess Aurora just smiled and held up an invitation that had landed in the garden. All the letters on it were backwards. Oh, my goodness. And look at the train of her dress going out the window. Oh, my gosh. Well, we certainly made a mess of things, Meriwether admitted, but I think I know what to do, Flora said. Then she told the other two fairies her plan. Soon the fairies were using their magic to put everyone to sleep. Next, they turned back the calendar so that it was weeks before the wedding. When they woke everyone up, no one in the kingdom had any idea what had happened. The fairies sat together, composing a list of preparations for the wedding. First, they chose roses and violets for the princess's bouquet. Then they decided on a recipe for the wedding cake and also settled on the perfect song to play as Aurora walked down the aisle. The next week, they addressed the invitations. When they were through, they began choosing the fabric and pattern for Aurora's gown. A week later, Princess Aurora stopped by with the king and queen. Try on your gown, Meriwether suggested. Aurora put on the pink and white gown, twirled around. I loved it she cried. So the preparations are going well then, the queen asked. The fairies looked at one another, trying hard not to giggle. Um, right on schedule, your majesty, exclaimed Fauna. <laughs> and that's our story. I hope you liked it. Make sure you like and subscribe and share with your friends. Bye until next time.